going to do some more graphing questions. This is from your textbook, 7-3, 7-4, 7-5, slope. But first we're going to do this warm up. I don't really like to separate things into, you know, slope and graphs and equations like they do in the text. I like to talk about it as one thing. It's graphing. It's graphing and it involves equations, tables, and graphs. Equations, tables, and graphs. It's one thing. You can look at an equation as a graph. You can look at a graph as an equation. You can look at a table and find the graph from it. And if you've got a graph, you can get a table from that. And equations and tables are intricately related as well. And I want you all to get used to using them, all three of them, equations, tables, and graphs, simultaneously, interchangeably, all the time. Okay. So, graph using intercepts. Whenever I ask you to, to, to graph using intercepts, we have to do one thing. What is it? What's our first step? Natalia. Um, make the 4y a 0. Okay. And how do we do that? We put in y equals 0. Right. We substitute 0 in for y. Now, what you could do is create a little table, right? That might help you. Again, equation, table, graph. We've got our equation. So we put a graph, we put a table together, and now we're going to graph it. Equation, table, graph. Every time for all the questions. No shortcuts. Equation, table, graph for every question. Get used to it, because then you won't get confused. So we've got our table. Here's our graph. I know it's small, but we'll make do. We put in 0 for y, and what do we get out for x? When we solve it, we get 3x equals 12. All right, so 3x equals 12, and x equals 4, right? Boom. And we put it in our table, and we plot it on our graph. See how it happens simultaneously, Gabby? One, two, three, four. There's our x-intercept. X-intercept. Foot, foot. And now, what do we do to find the y-intercept? When the line crosses the y-axis, x is equal to what? Zero. Right. So we put an x at 0, we put it in our table, we put it in our equation, and we put it on our graph. <laughs> now on our table, we're running out of space, but I'm going to do it in a different color just so that it doesn't get too confusing. I'll do it in black. Yeah, actually what is it equal to? We've got 3x, so no, 3 times 0, zero. plus 4y equals four y equals 12. So that implies, you getting this, Stuart? Yeah. Um, that so, implies um, y equals, right? Three. three. Not good salt. Everybody get that part of it? So we put in zero for x and we get y equals three. Sorry. And now we plot that. It goes in the table. It also goes in the graph. There's our y intercept. Hard to read it. Now we can draw a line. Whenever you have two points, you can draw a line. And guess what? You are. Dum, 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 done. We draw, that's how we did it. We got our x-intercept, we got our y-intercept because we, we plotted the zeros, we solved our equation with zeros in them. When x equals zero, we solve for y, y equals three, no problem, that's our y-intercept. When y equals zero, we solve for x, x equals four, boom, boom, boom. Zap, 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 two points, one line, done. Equation, table, graph, Equation, table, graph, every time, all the time. They could do, and this is 45 through 49. It looks like the tough challenge questions, but I want you to get used to tackling those, okay? Because those are good. They're really good. Sometimes they're really good. Sometimes they're a little weird. But So we're matching the equation with the line. Where's the equation? It's right here. We're used to using equations. And here are the lines. All right, now, where do you start on something like that? Any ideas? What, what were some of the things you did to start that out or to find the connection between those? Anyone in Savon, did you have a, a method to your madness here? Were you able to find any of these, or was it just completely bewildering? Anybody? Pepper. Actually, I just went by, after the x, if any numbers were added, what were they subtracted from? Uh -huh. That's why number 49, I thought was e. You thought 49 was what? E. E, and you were absolutely right. Seriously? Yes, you were. <laughs> yes, you were. Any other ideas? I don't, I don't know where you got that idea, but you certainly got it right. So good job, sure. Stuart. Just look at the fine. Well, um, I'm thinking that 48 would have been D. I'm sorry. No, I'm, that's a lie. I think 48 would have been A. Yes. Well, where are they getting this from? Do you see the connection? Let's yeah. let somebody else say it. Go for it. Okay, Hannah? <laughs> no? Shrug the 
show that not sure. That's okay. How about Amanda? Any ideas? Where they're getting that from? Other people? Yes. Um, like, if it's plus one, it's a 46. Yeah. Well, first, you have to find the 45, and it's C. Yes, 45 is, no, sorry, 45 is C. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Why, so, why, though? Why, why, why? Because it's on the half X mark, and then if it's, like, plus one, then you just go to the one right above C and not be B. And then if it's minus one, then go right below the C. Okay, which is D you're, you're absolutely right. Yeah. It, but I still don't hear anybody can tell explaining why. Marshall? The numbers are the coordinates. The numbers are the coordinates for the plane. What does he mean? Which numbers? There's a lot of numbers here. The one here yeah. is the coordinate for what? The y. The y what? Axis. The y axis. You're close. The y. The one here is the coordinate of the y intercept. Intercept. Yeah. See that? That's how you know which one's up and which one's down. Got that? But what happened here? What's the what's the number there? Where's the number? Camera, where's the number? What is the number here? It's zero. And guess what? What's the y-intercept? Yeah. Zero. zero. See that? It's nifty, huh? Pretty cool. So this is actually the invisible zero, I suppose you could say. Invisible because when you add zero to anything, it doesn't affect it. So we can put it there or take it away. It doesn't really matter. You know what I'm saying? Remember zero and one? They're the tricky numbers, right? King and queen of numbers, they have special power. They come and go when they want. This one, the zero is invisible. And then she's there, and then she's gone. Okay, I can take that away. Tricky ones. All right, so uh, what else? Everybody following? This is a really good question. This is an awesome question. I love this question. What do I do? I put a couple stars here. I love this question. Do you think that might be on a test? Yes. Yes. Yeah, for sure. We have a test before Thanksgiving. That's next week. Is there any reason why you can't all ace this? No. Study this. Study this. Study this. Yeah, I'm going to do that. It's awesome. And uh, Stuart. I have a question. What if yeah. the, instead of y equals, or if it's x equals, uh -huh. instead of one half? That x? would be different. Then it wouldn't work the same. Good, good, good question. Yes. See, that's the kind of thinking that, you know, that's it. That's where it's at. You're thinking on your feet, coming up with excellent ideas and chair. questions. If it were x equals one half y, we would, it wouldn't be the same. It's not how it works. You're going to see why in a minute because we're going to do something uh, very special with graphing. And it's called, does anybody know what it is? Y equals MX plus C. Yeah, that's what this is. But we're leading into that. That's what it is. Okay, so Y equals 1 half X minus 1. Ingrid, which one of these lines is going to be Y, y equals 1 half X minus 1? C. Gabby? Or Ingrid? C. Click to the button. She got it. Yeah, D. D. D for day. All right, 48. Ingrid, this is your chance. What was that? Huh? Yeah, this one. Y equals 1 half X plus 2. A, right. A. A. Canadian, A. A? A. 49. Y equals 1 half X minus 2. Giorgio. Haven't heard from you. E. E. Says more. E. So move forward. Easy, right? <laughs> because the y-intercept is negative 2. See that? That's the key here. And remember, here's the key. Y equals mx plus b. Where the b is the y-intercept. B is the y-intercept. Write this down, guys, as usual. As usual. Y, b is equal to the y-intercept, okay? Or is, I guess I put an arrow like that. And what does m stand for? M is what? X. Well, the slope. The slope. M is the slope. So you notice that. What was there about this question? What can you say about the slopes of all these lines? How do these lines look to you, Savon? What can you say about all of them? What do they have in common? Pretty shallow. Pretty shallow. Yeah, they're not too steep. If you're on a bike, you probably wouldn't mind riding up here. Not too bad. If you have one of those 18-speed thousand dollar BMX bikes, you'd probably be okay. Or the power scooters. The lazy power scooters, scooters, yeah. It's, it's a lazy person's game. When I was a kid, it was like three speeds. It's, it's a lazy person.